Well, good morning. Uh, thank you all for being here. Uh, we're going to try something a little bit different this week. We don't have a, a theme, uh, a bunch of people here uh, to, uh, to talk about uh, a new initiative. But as we appear uh, to be reaching the end of the legislative session, I want to take some time to reflect on the work of the legislature as well as my team have done for the state of Vermont. As you recall, in January, I shared my belief that we could set a standard of civility and good government uh, that would be an example across the country. That we could remind a completely polarized country uh, where too many see their side is always right and the other is always wrong, that there is still more that unites us than divides us. And that compromise is not a weakness, but a strength. I committed to focusing on areas of agreement, on working towards consensus and compromise when we can, and to listen to all ideas to grow the economy, make Vermont more affordable, and protect the most vulnerable. And I asked lawmakers to give uh, my ideas a fair shot, uh, to hear us out, and to work with me to keep the focus on the merits of our proposals, not political scorekeeping. Today, I want to thank the legislature for doing just that. Together, we set a positive tone, focused on the issues. And we've already come together to show that good policy makes, uh, that, that we've been uh, utilizing comes through uh, with balance and collaboration. One example is a bill I signed this week that will allow the Department of Financial Regulation to consolidate our licensing statute by over 70 pages which will lead to better compliance and more efficiency. The truth is, um, probably this bill wasn't covered uh, this week uh, and won't get much attention because it doesn't sound all that exciting uh, and there wasn't any drama surrounding it, but it's an, an example of good government and what we can do when we work together. Another example is the Budget Adjustment Act I signed. It includes many good initiatives and retired and interfund loan that will take care of part of our debt. Again, an example of good government. In addition, while we don't know where we'll end up, we've made progress this session in addressing our demographic challenges by leveraging our assets and focusing on workforce development. For starters, the administration, the House and Senate have made significant investments in our cradle to career education system by helping working families access high quality childcare. Both chambers have also supported higher education in order to keep opportunities within reach for Vermonters wanting to go to college. In the area of workforce development, the legislature has moved forward with many of our recommendations to fill the good jobs we know are available right now and recruit more people to Vermont, knowing we can't address the challenge just through training programs. Every job we fill takes some of the tax burden off someone struggling to get by. Now, I think we all recognize uh, in these final days, tensions will rise, and there will be areas where we just can't come to agreement. I've already shared my concerns about raising taxes and fees above and beyond what I proposed. And we're looking at more than a $50 million surplus and a potential revenue upgrade. But disagreements are okay. It's just part of the process. And we'll work our way through it. Regardless of the end game, drama, and tension, I think we've proven that the spirit of genuine collaboration of a good faith give and take with a civil tone that we practice this session are important. Because with the demographic challenges we all know exist and the growing budget pressures, along with the economic challenges too many of our 251 towns, cities, and villages are challenged by, we must do all we can together to solve the problems our state faces and help Vermonters who elected us. I'm hopeful We'll close out this session feeling on both sides like we took important steps forward for Vermont and we'll be ready to do so again next year. So again, I send my thanks to legislators, my team, for all the good ideas and hard work still yet to come. So with that, I'd be happy to try and answer some of your questions. What are those areas where you think you just won't be able to come to agreement? 
Well, again, I think I've laid this out a bit, um, especially when we're seeing uh, revenue upgrades uh, for this uh, fiscal year. It appears uh, we'll have no less than a $50 million upgrade. I mean, I mean in terms of revenue, uh, surplus. Uh, so with that in mind, I'm not sure why we'd be contemplating raising taxes. Uh, if, we can, if we can utilize uh, some, that surplus, uh, I believe there'll be a consensus forecast probably in July uh, that will upgrade that uh, <coughs> further base spending. So I just think at this point in time, we should take a look at what we're proposing. And we, you know, as you recall, uh, in the uh, initial uh, uh, original budget that I proposed, uh, we didn't, uh, we live within our means and had everything that we're contemplating right now within that budget. Leaving aside the paid leave legislation, what taxes have you identified in the budget and the revenue bill that, that you find problematic? Well, again, I, I think the, the open question really is uh, water quality. Uh, I think that's the big one. Uh, the initiatives with water quality we had uh, included in our <coughs> original budget uh, and that uh, now uh, they're looking for different sources uh, to come up with the $8 million that they, uh, they need to satisfy that. So I would say that that's a problematic area. Software is a non-starter. Yeah, you know, we've been through this uh, a few times. Uh, I remember when I was in the Senate, we started talking about it, and when I was Lieutenant Governor, uh, we debated this, and then the Senate decided that we weren't going to cloud, uh, to tax a cloud. So uh, from my standpoint, uh, I think that would be problematic. Again, considering that we have a surplus coming, uh, and we'll have, I believe, an upgrade in, uh, in base spending. So uh, I, I, we, could, we could forecast that, and we know we have the money. Uh, we, should, uh, we should look for that source. So you can live with the budget that they've got right now, leaving aside the water quality stuff? The budget yeah, that I mean, uh, there, there are some areas, I, yeah, I mean, they're not spending a lot more uh, than what we had contemplated. Now, they left a, a number of things out, but that's okay. I mean, we can, uh, we can work our way through it. Uh, but again, I think that the big one is the, the water quality issue, I, because I think we need to fund that. I've said that we need to, to fully fund uh, the water quality initiative. I think uh, Treasurer Pierce laid that out in her letter to the legislature as well. And how like to fund it with, through the natural growth? Well, again, I, I propose uh, utilizing uh, the one source, the estate tax that's in, in, the, uh, in our budget. Uh, and. Uh, they, uh, they decided that they didn't want to go with that route, but considering that we have uh, more general <coughs> income coming, uh, the surplus, and as well, this, uh, I believe, we'll, we'll have a consensus forecast, we'll upgrade that, we could utilize that uh, to use the estate tax. So you'd like to use the surplus? I mean, it's coming, it'd be coming out of the, the general fund, so we could, uh, everything that they, uh, they have used, uh, because they use the money that that we had, we had contemplated. They used the $8 million that was in the estate tax. So we could use the estate, estate tax again. And use the- and satisfy the some of their- Additional their revenue needs. to backfill the general fund? Right, to, to, because that's where they've taken some right. of that money out of it. Right. Um, have you begun that end of session intensive negotiating that happens? I don't know if it's intensive, uh, but we've, uh, we've met a couple of times. So then you feel like things are moving in a positive well, direction? it looks like in some cases they are. Uh, again, there's a lot going on, a lot of dynamics, a lot of bills that uh, have yet to be finalized. So we'll see where it all ends up. Have you provided them with a minimum wage increase construct that you would be able to get behind? No. Is okay. there a minimum wage increase construct you would be able to get behind? Um, I, again, I'm looking at the aggregate. Uh, and I say this a lot, but, uh, but it's real. When you look at the aggregate burden on Vermonters, whether you're looking at the, uh, the paid family leave, uh, whether you're looking at the increased taxes, uh, whether you're looking at uh, things outside of even our budget, the, the burden on, on Vermonters, like uh, the 15% uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield uh, uh, up, upgrade their, their request uh, to increase those rates. I mean, that's, that's going to impact Vermonters. So, I find that unacceptable. House Democrats are hoping that you could get behind the 2026 um, at the earliest $15 minimum wage increase, the slower rollout. Is there any you know, chance of you supporting that this year? Well, again, I'm looking at everything in the aggregate, and uh, I'm not sure where we're going to end up. 
Because suffice it to say, I'm not going to agree with everything. Do you prefer the idea of tying it to CPI as opposed to having it be a firm deadline uh, and up to $15? Well, again, we, we, uh, I voted for that when I was in the Senate. Uh, to tie it to the CPI, uh, that, that we were never going to have this conversation again if we tied it to the CPI and raised the, uh, the minimum wage, and here we are having the conversation. So uh, again, I've voted for that. We do have an increase in the minimum wage. I believe that the uh, natural growth in the economy is the answer. It's not my initiative uh, to raise the minimum wage, as you, as you well know. I mean, I vetoed it last year. The, uh, you can you talk about the aggregate and, and that makes perfect sense, but you get the bills one at a time, yeah. uh, so you have to make a decision on each individual one. Um, uh, is this a uh, is this a way of holding your cards close to your vest? Or well, I, I don't know if it's uh, decisions when you get individual bills. I'll fix this. <laughs> um, you know we're, we're wrapping up. I mean there are some I, I think. Uh, who believe that we'll get out of here on Saturday night. Uh, if that's the case, then they will all come at once, and I'll be able to take the aggregate at that point. Um, you've had a few days to sit with the uh, abortion rights bill that passed, and you decided what you're going to do with it yet? Yeah, I'm, I'm again, I, that's, uh, that's difficult in some respects. Um, it's a very emotional issue for some. Uh, you know I'm, I'm pro-choice. I believe in a woman's right to choose. I think we're seeing in real time uh, nationally uh, the fears of many, what's happening across our country and in individual states. Uh, so I, I believe we need to a woman's right to choose. What are your thoughts about um, the governor's decision to sign the legislation in Alabama that makes that states? Well, again, that's uh, extreme uh, in the opposite direction. Uh, and I, uh, I, again, I'm, I'm pro-choice uh, and I believe in a woman's right to choose. So. Suffice it, to, suffice it to say, I, w I wouldn't be signing a bill like that in this state. Will you sign this bill publicly, H57? Uh, well, I haven't made a decision on signing anything uh, in public at this point in time. Uh, there's a lot of bills coming and a lot of requests. So but you will sign it? Uh, I will. I'll take a look at it. So We haven't received the bill yet, by the way. What, what you said you uh, support a woman's right to choose. You think it's important to protect those rights. Uh, What's the downside of this legislation? What about it is giving you pause to say? Well, it's just emotional for, for many people. I mean, we see it. Uh, I mean, and it's not just from Republicans, to be honest with you. I mean, I have, I have uh, Democrats who are, are writing to us and saying, you know, this, this uh, is uncomfortable for me. Uh, and, you know, for me, uh, from my standpoint, I, I, again, believe in a woman's right to choose. And I believe that uh, government should stay out of it. Uh, I don't believe that this is something that we should be involved in. So uh, this is, a, this is a, a time when it is between uh, a doctor and, and uh, a woman, and uh, we should not be involved in this. So I guess I'm just trying to take the emotion out of it as much as possible and uh, reflect on that, and, and we'll see what, what I do. But uh, So where are your reservations? Are your reservations that the protections may go too far? No. My, my, uh, I think what I'm, I'm feeling uh, from... Uh, some of the reaction that I'm receiving uh, from many constituents across the state, that they're just uneasy about this, even though this is what we're doing right now. I mean, there's nothing that's changing. It's just codifying what's, uh, what's in practice. So just trying to get people uh, to, to uh, understand uh, that this is, uh, this is something that's uh, being done right in Vermont right now. But they need to get comfortable with it. Why, uh, why are you being so non-committal just a few days until the end of the session on paid family leave, minimum wage, guns, abortion, like you're still not ready to say where you Well, I think they need to work it out. I mean, we're seeing there's a, there's a lot of difference between the House and the Senate. Uh, this isn't just about the differences between the legislature and the administration or me. Uh, they need to work out their differences first. And, and then I have something to react to. I, I, but you on know, firearms they're, they're abortion, they have worked out their yeah. And then you're still not well, they haven't uh, they haven't taken a final vote on the on the gun bill yet. So, wh where are you on the gun bill right now? Again, you know, I'll, I'll, when they when they pass it, I'll take a look at it. I'm going to look at uh, some of the data. I haven't read the bill uh, completely yet. I'd like to look at the data uh, to see see if it uh, if it holds up. <coughs> Is it safe to say you would veto a paid leave bill if it was if the program was funded by a mandatory payroll tax? Yeah, I'm not in favor of the payroll tax. So, uh, so that's a yes. You would be well, 
uh, again, I, I want to look at things in the aggregate and see where where the burden, the financial burden is on Veronica's. But uh, that's a big burden for a guy to remember. As you might recall, last uh, last year I vetoed uh, the uh, paid family leave that was supposedly only 16 million at that point. I mean, I think that was the all in uh, 16 million, and then it grew to 80 million. I think in the House, I think the Senate is 27 million maybe right now. And my plan, uh, volunteer, uh, a voluntary plan uh, that is uh, universal, uh, has zero costs. Uh, Senator Brew told uh, John in his column this week that uh, by you sort of stepping out of the uh, legislative <laughs> session that you sort of set the Democrats amongst themselves in fighting. Um, and we've certainly seen that play out. Was that intentional? Well, I, last year, I mean, you, you saw it again. Uh, there was a, quite a reaction when I uh, set some lines in the sand uh, and it was adversary. I'm trying to change the tone. And I think that uh, what we've seen this year is that there's a different tone, it's more civil. Regardless of where our disagreements are, we're talking. I, I mean, I think that's important. So I, I, I think it's intentional. It was intentional for me to get to this point where we're still talking. And, uh, and I think that's important. Does that change your approach to vetoing, not vetoing a bill uh, if you are, you know, if, if you are being more collegial, more cooperative? Um, well, I, it certainly ends, it enters the equation. Right. I, I mean, I'm trying to do whatever we can uh, to work together. So I'm not trying to be adversarial. <laughs> I think it would be helpful if you let people know where you stood on some of these bills. I did that last year, and I, I'm not sure that it worked out all that well. Um, one of the things we're not talking about is what you've characterized as unsustainable growth in the education fund. Uh, do you have any concerns that that is Yeah, not? absolutely. We're spending, what, 60, 67 million more than last year, uh, and there are fewer students. Uh, so that uh, continues to grow, but I didn't... I didn't find a whole lot of partners in, in trying to, to limit that growth uh, last year. And we had a lot of ideas on what we could do. Um, there wasn't a lot of interest, so you know you need to move on. I mean, if this is what, what they want, and they have the majority, uh, they, can, they can do with what they want. So I have to pick my battles, uh, and uh, we're trying to work uh, towards uh, areas where we have common goals and, and work from there. Do you have any thoughts on what's become sort of merged special education and Act 46 delays? Um, do you think that that bill, is it important that it gets through the session? Would you like to see a delay in the special education reforms? You know, I, I, was, I thought uh, there was going to be a delay uh, in the beginning. And, and again, I was supportive of that. Um, I still am supportive of a delay if they can come together. Um, but, uh, but, you know, we're getting closer and closer to July 1. Uh, and uh, you know, people need some time, and and I believe that we're our agency of education is trying to, to help uh, communities and districts uh, adhere to the law, which is July one. I think you've had uh, it's S forty nine PFOA bill. I think that's been on your desk for a few days. Oh yeah, yeah. There's a few. Okay. Yeah, there was that was yesterday. Uh, All right. Yeah. But there's a few more. There's a few more bills today uh, yeah. that I have to look through. Okay. <laughs> that are due today, I believe. So it doesn't sound like you're, so you're just sort of starting to have those final conversations. It's not very intense. You're taking a kind of a more hands-off uh, approach, uh, <coughs> being up front as you were before. Is, is that about where we are right now? With just a well, again, there's, there's, there's a lot of differences between the House and the Senate that they need to work out. <laughs> I, I don't know what to react to, uh, and I'm not taking sides on it. Uh, you know, there's there's an opportunity for them to, to work out their differences, and then you'll wait. Sure. Have you given leadership any private counsel on what you're willing to do or not do, or are they blind? Blind. I think I, I'm answering the same questions that I'm answering here today. In the same manner. In the same manner. So they don't know what you'll do. Or I'm not being do. transparent. But not really, because they don't know what you stand for, don't stand for. Sure. I, I've said that, uh, yeah, you know, I think we have to look at things in the aggregate. And show me where you're going with with all these bills, and and uh, then I can react. But I, I can't, I, I can't, I'm not going to pick and choose. And, and as I think John or somebody had said, you know, when these bills come piecemeal, meal, uh, and I start uh, 
I start uh, saying okay to this one and okay to the next one, and pretty soon you run out of options. So I, I need to know where they're going. But we're getting to that point. I mean, we'll know a lot more, I think, if they are going to adjourn on Saturday night. We'll know a lot more in a week. Has it been productive to this point here? I think so. I mean, I, that's, oh, you weren't here for my opening statement. I, I can give you that. It was great. <laughs> I talked about you know how collegial I think this has been, and how productive it's been, and it's been a lot of uh, goodwill, a lot of good work that's been done by all all the above legislators and and our our folks. I mean, just the working together in committees. I think it's been again a willingness uh, to listen to one another, and I think that's regardless of the outcome. I think that's been helpful, and we can show uh, the nation and others uh, when they're. There's so much controversy and there's so much polarization that, that there's a different way. Even if you, even if you end up differently, you know, we, we can still, we can still agree and we can still get along. You talk I'm about sure it. Neil would share his footage with you. <laughs> you talk about how if, if you could, been, but I think yeah. that like the consensus among those watching the legislature is that it's been the opposite of that. that the Democrats haven't been able to move tax and reg, gun control, well, sorry, gun control they have, but sort of, sort of half the measure that they were hoping for, they leave minimum wage, how's that productive? Well, again, we'll see what the final product is, um, but they're, they're having their debates, uh, they're, they're dealing with the issues, the same issues that I'm dealing with, and they're dealing with their constituents. So, uh, you know, I've highlighted that, uh, that I believe uh, that Vermont is a burden. Uh, that we have to live within our means. I think uh, we have to focus on, on uh, workforce development. They've been, they see it as well. I mean, they're hearing it uh, from their own communities. So they're reacting the same way that I'm reacting. So I think that's helpful. Uh, on the waterways uh, cleanup, uh, one option that I hear that the, that the Senate is considering is <laughs> using some of the unexpected revenue to fund the water cleanup for one more year and then come back in in January again. Uh, would you prefer to have a permanent source than a one-time? Yeah, I would prefer, in fact, again, I laid out a path for the estate tax. The federal government said that's uh, that's viable. We're okay with that. If you want, if that's a dedicated source, we're, we're good with that. So let's just use the estate tax and we have general fund coming in. Problem solved. Um, but Mr. Nice doesn't mean you're not going to veto um, whatever you think um, breaks that sort of aggregate burden, which has not been defined. Is that you're perfectly willing to veto stuff, right? Well, I, I think I, I've shown in the first two years that uh, I don't mind using the veto pen, but I've been. You know, I, I'm not using that as a threat this year. I'm trying to, to find a path forward uh, so that we can get out of here, living within our means and giving Vermonters what they want. Did they leave the minimum wage don't get passed this year? Would that be a success for you? Well, no, I want paid, uh, paid leave uh, with a voluntary plan. I want family leave. I think that's important. I think it would be beneficial. So I would like to see family leave passed by the voluntary plan. And then you can always do something else with it. You know, that's the beauty of this plan. You know, we can, we can try it out. We can test drive this. And, and then we can see uh, what the opportunities, the challenges are within this plan. And then if they want to go to a mandatory plan at some point in the future, it's all in place. And it's easy to do at that point. You don't take the new car right out, out of the truck. No. No. So you're going to which? Are you going to race this summer or this season? I hope that to do a few, yeah. Have you decided about the plastic bag? I, no, I said, you know, it appears uh, the grocers and retailers are okay with it and it's passed by a wide uh, majority. I'm yeah, perfectly willing to. To take a look, I, I haven't seen it yet. I don't believe. Um, <coughs>
<coughs> After seeing the Wells and White reduction this weekend, are you ready for your support behind him for uh, President 2020? No, I thought it was interesting, though. I mean, I, I, I don't know who else is going to, to put their name out there. I mean, I've heard some other names floating around, so I'm not, I'm not ready to, to get behind anybody at this point. Uh, but I thought it was interesting. He's articulate, very forthright. Um, didn't agree with everything that he said, but, but there were a lot, of, a lot of things I agreed with him on. He's an interesting guy. Oh, sure. <laughs> you, you like Larry Hogan? You're I like Larry, Larry Hogan, Hogan. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I like, there's a few. Charlie Baker, maybe, maybe he'll run. Yeah. You guys do seem to be showing that there's another way to uh, govern as a Republican. Well, you know, I think if we're going to change the dynamics across the nation, uh, we all have to act appropriately in our own backyards. And I think that that's why I'm, I'm taking this seriously. And I, I believe in civility, and I believe in, in respect, and, and I'm trying to, to show that we can do this in a different way. Again, we, we're going to get to areas of disagreement, uh, and that's, that's okay. You know, they have options, I have options, and we'll just uh, we'll work, work our way through it. Uh, there's some climate change people who are, you know, but not together, you know, we haven't done it really enough. There's some disappointing situations. Uh, what do you say to that? Well, we know climate change is real. Um, we have to do better. We're trying to take some steps uh, in terms of our infrastructure. 60% of our carbon emissions are due to transportation, so we have to take this seriously. And, uh, and we're, we're doing some things this year in the budget and otherwise weatherization and so forth. Uh, but uh, we, we've got to, you know, we've got to pick our priorities as well. I mean, we want to clean up the, the lake. Uh, we want to help Vermonters. And, and again, it's all about prioritizing uh, where we focus. And um, we're doing what we can uh, in terms of climate change. But it's not enough to meet any of our climate goals. Um, yeah, I mean, <coughs> we've got to, again, I, I believe uh, the answer is going to be uh, in transportation when you have 60% of it, uh, carbon emissions uh, are emitted through transportation. That's where. That's where it's at, uh, with the with many new initiatives in terms of transitioning to electric vehicles. I think uh, that's that's part of the answer. That's why we want to incentivize that, uh, trying to uh, to get more uh, Vermonters to adapt to that. But we need the charging infrastructure at the same time to make sure that we have that in place uh, when as we transition to electric vehicles. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.